idea that America always seems to be on the quote right side when it comes to promoting democracy around the world. And, you know, I guess that's the same here with uh, situations in Egypt and Syria and so forth. And the media always seems to kind of jump in and, you know, support this idea that America is always right. We're always the ones with the white hats. We're the exceptional ones. Could you elaborate on that? Because I just thought that was so profound. Yeah. Well, there's a, it's, it's true. There's even a name for it. It's called American Exceptionalism. And it's a, 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 doc, it's a doctrine which is a, a, adopted uh, pretty much across the spectrum. There is a debate going on about foreign policy. So a lively debate about, uh, say, what's called sometimes the Obama Doctrine. Uh, every president has to have a doctrine uh, ever since Nixon. Uh, so what's the Obama doctrine? Uh, well, there's a debate as to whether uh, Obama is going to uh, hold aloft the uh, uh, the uh, banner of American exceptionalism the way his predecessors have done proudly, maintaining that the U.S. is exceptional, or is he going to veer towards what's called isolationism, which is a strange notion in itself. Uh, isolationism means uh, we should obey international law and uh, 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 accepted practice and, uh, and not uh, act like a uh, rogue state that, uh, throws, that uses force, violence, and threat at will. That's called isolationism. Uh, but both between these extremes, the debate rages. Uh, both extremes accept the fundamental principle of what's called American exceptionalism, namely what you described, that uh, the United States is dedicated to freedom, equality, uh, democracy, human rights, all good things. Uh, they agree, of course, that we sometimes make mistakes in our uh, innocence or naivete or their blunders, but uh, nothing can be fundamentally uh, immoral or improper. That's American exceptionalism. That's accepted on all sides. Uh, a couple of comments to make about this. For one thing, there's nothing particularly American about it. Uh, every great power uh, takes the same stand. So uh, a Stalinist Russia uh, you know, prided itself on its uh, advancing the cause of human civilization, uh, uh, promoting democracy, people's democracy, uh, defending the world against uh, the fascist forces led by the United States, uh, Imperial Japan, and it's uh, right in the midst of its worst horrendous atrocities. You read its internal documents. Uh, they were discussing with each other how they're going to bring an earthly paradise to the people of uh, China. They're going to, in Manchuria, the ones they were massacring, uh, they're going to uh, protect them from the Chinese bandits who are trying to disrupt the uh, peace and harmony, the development that they're bringing, and so on. Uh, same with Hitler. Uh, Hitler was going to, when he took over Czechoslovakia, was going to end ethnic cleansing, uh, bring the uh, conflicted people of the country under the uh, cover of uh, Germany with its advanced culture and advanced technology and would help them develop. Uh, Britain, of course, was uh, um, uh, so magnificent that uh, uh, only those who were really backward could uh, impute uh, uh, ugly motives to it. Uh, even the leading figures like John Stuart Mill uh, uh, advocated this position. Uh, France had its uh, civilizing mission. Uh, go back uh, anywhere you like, you find the same thing. So it's not American exceptionalism is not exceptional. Uh, another aspect of it is that it, the doctrine is immune to fact. It doesn't matter what the facts are. Actually, that's even been pointed out by some of the most uh, uh, well-known and respected uh, uh, advocates of American exceptionalism. So take, for example, uh, Hans Morgenthau, fine scholar, uh, one of the founders of uh, uh, the dominant uh, field of uh, the dominant school of international relations. It's called realism, hard-headed, no sentimental realism. 
uh, Morgenthau was one of the founders. And uh, he wrote a book called The Purpose of America, in which he uh, presented the thesis that the United States is unlike all other countries past and present, in that it has a purpose, a transcendent purpose. The purpose is to bring equality and freedom and democracy and other good things everywhere. But he was a serious scholar. So he looked through the record and he, pointed, he recognized that the United States has consistently acted in ways which violate its purpose. And then he adds an interesting comment, which is to the point, although not in the way he intended. He says to criticize the notion of American exceptionalism, of uh, US fundamental US idealism, to criticize it on these grounds is like the error of atheism, which criticizes God, uh, the uh, God's uh, uh, munificence uh, on grounds that evil exists. And he says, we can't fall into the error of atheism. That means that the doctrine holds whatever the facts, immune to fact. So it's a religious doctrine, and it should be regarded that way. It's a secular religion, one commonly constructed by power systems to justify themselves, to justify their own crimes and atrocities, which are at most, uh, as Obama said about the invasion of Iraq, a, a blunder, a strategic blunder. He was greatly praised by, for that by liberals to say it's a strategic blunder. Uh, they didn't bother pointing out that uh, you could read the same thing in Pravda in the early 1980s, where commentators uh, who, who had their own form of exceptionalism, Russian exceptionalism, uh, it, uh, com uh, complained that the invasion of Afghanistan was a blunder, a strategic blunder, shouldn't have done it. Or for that matter, uh, the German generals after Stalingrad they recognized that Hitler's two-front war was a strategic blunder, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't have done it, should have uh, knocked off Britain first. Uh, well, we don't admire them for these uh, uh, stands. In fact, we regard them as morally grotesque. But the same stand on our own part is uh, regarded as uh, highly moral and uh, extremely admirable. Uh, so Obama is uh, honored for taking this position. And that follows from the exceptionalist doctrine that whatever we do is very well motivated, even though we can make mistakes. Uh, we, we were innocent, we were naive, we didn't think things through, so we got something wrong. I mean, even the most saintly a person or power system can make mistakes. Now that's a, with regard to democracy, with you brought, which you brought up, that's an interesting case, and it uh, accords very well with uh, Morgenthau's uh, thesis, inadvertent thesis, that uh, the doctrines are religion. Uh, so, for example, it have been it. It's consistently the case that the United States opposes democracy. Uh, you mentioned the Middle East. Uh, consistently, the United States has opposed democracy in the Middle East. And this has been recognized internally. So, for example, you go back to 1958, uh, President Eisenhower uh, raised the question with his staff uh, why there is uh, what he called a campaign of hatred against us in the Arab world, and not by the governments, which more or less uh, uh, support us, but by the people. And the National Security Council, the main planning agency, in fact, came out with a, a, an analysis, a document, it's long been declassified, in which they explained the campaign of hatred. They said there's a perception in the region among the people that the United States supports harsh and brutal dictatorships and blocks democracy and development, uh, and that we do it because we... Uh, have the goal of controlling their energy resources. And it went on to say that this is pretty accurate, and furthermore, that's what we should be doing. But nevertheless, we support democracy.